our only day in Madrid. So we tried to get out and do some sightseeing, got really wet and cold, and we ended up at this coffee shop. So usually we would be pretty bummed, but we are going on a food tour tonight with Devour Madrid. And when I think of Spain, I think of tapas and wine, and it's a tapas and wine tour, so we're really excited. Super old, it's from the mid 1800s, and we're gonna have their famous top. And it's raining, and we're going in. Thank you. Thank you. Apparently in the old days, the food vendors are separate from the drink vendors, so you had to pay separately, and this place still does that. So we had to buy our drink and then go buy our top of We're starting with one of my favorite foods in the world, a croquette. <laughs> I think it has fish in it. It's called some basic thing. Croquette de bacalao. Salted cod. Apparently in old traditional bars, you can just throw your trash on the floor because they used to know how popular a bar was based on how much trash there was. So. That feels so weird. Before they had TripAdvisor, they had no other way of knowing. <laughs> Our next stop is also one of my favorite foods, hamon. It has to be super thin. Yeah. Often like four by four centimeters if you can even get it that sort of size. Like that's the perfect size and as thin as you can. This is the hamon iberico, top grade one. You may have heard of pata negra, which is black food. There's also serrano ham, which we'll try. We've also got some other sort of pork products, all from the Iberian pig, and some of the cheeses as well. Come with me. Ah! <laughs> No. <laughs> I'm holding the ham cutter's knife. Which is a big deal. They have to train for like two to three years to be able to do this. It has to be super thin and the perfect size. I think you're doing pretty good. Muy bueno. Okay, gracias. <laughs> has been blown by the hamon. We've learned so much about it since we've been here. There's this ham called Ibierco, which is like a really expensive ham, but it's expensive because the pigs like roam wild and all they feed them is acorns, so their fat turns from like saturated fat to good like nut fat. Yeah. And it costs 187 euros per kilo. It's crazy expensive and crazy good. He's taking us into the dungeon of the ham shop. You no? have a lot okay. of hamon. Yeah. <laughs> Muchos. That's amazing. This is the room dryer, dryer. No? Wow. Oh, it smells so good down here. <laughs> Thank amazing. you so much. Thank you so much. Me gusta. On to the next stop. That one's going to be really hard to beat, though. That hamon was insane. but it's from like half an hour away in a little bodega in a cute little town and it's a local Madrid wine so you're not going to find this really anywhere else but this restaurant was very overwhelming with deliciousness so first of all we had a white wine that's only in Madrid then the little round meat stuff thing was cow tail deep fried also delicious. and then the tomato salad I never knew the tomatoes could have so much flavor like they were so good and it was just olive oil and some onions and salt I think that was it 
like the Christmas. It was the Christmas. And now we're going to the next place. They have their own olive oil, which they've got their own olive groves in the south, and more importantly for us, they have their own wine. So they have their own reds and their own whites. So we're going to try three reds and do like a little, I know it's hard with this voice, but try and do a non pretentious wine tasting. <laughs> I just learned so much about wine, it's blowing my mind. So they poured us these three glasses and we had no idea what any of them were. And we had to taste them and think about what they smell like slash taste like. And there's all these options like grass, licorice, charred wood, leather. So we had to smell them and taste them. Then he told us, so they're all so different. He told us they're all the same grape from the same region, the same bottle, but they were all just aged differently. Some were aged in the bottle longer and then in the barrel for just a little bit and stuff like that. The coolest thing I learned is that if you sip an acidic wine and then do this really awkward thing where you lean over and open your mouth, you'll salivate. If it's not acidic, you won't. So this one, I took a sip. And literally <laughs> the spit almost falls out of your mouth, and then this one, not at all. And like, you don't know what's just not. crazy. We are definitely ending on a high note, getting to try all these new foods. The two of the most interesting ones are these potatoes. Apparently the secret is to find a restaurant where they make their own sauce, because it's very tricky. And also these green peppers. Apparently it's like playing Russian roulette, but with food. Sometimes they're super hot and sometimes they're not. It depends on the season and the time. She sounds kind of gross. Oh, <laughs> when you're tasting it, <laughs> <traditionally> <laughs> you do this. 